And so after, um, after there was a certain initial appearance of these kinds of materials, uh, because there, I think there was a, the, the journal editors and others saw a severe lack of response, a severe lack of interest by anyone, as if no one cared about any of this stuff, which is a self-fulfilling prophecy kind of arrangement. Everyone was actually terrified, in my opinion, to get into this stuff. Okay, so like, so speak, withered on the vine. By the 90s, by the mid-90s, no more of this kind of material simply appeared. I myself was not writing anything. Uh, as far as I know, hockey turned to other materials by this point. There was a big disillusionment, perhaps, at this direction by this time. Uh, uh, because uh, it was not so easy to get a, a, a pro-gay attitude established in the Jungian literature in an ongoing way as it had been thought originally. They were liberal enough to begin to include something, but it was going to require a much bigger opening. For them, that meant a big, deeper struggle is going to have to go on maybe for decades and on the level of theory. So while that's beginning to develop, so I'm beginning to think of more into this seriously. That's when postmodernism begins its move. And it just sweeps through. So there's now no longer any interest in a uh, pre-postmodern perspective on anything, hardly. Certainly not something that already is homophobically considered highly controversial, that is homosexual topics. By the turn of the century, the turn of the new century, uh, uh, you can no longer uh, be the old pro-gay or pro-gay liberation like this article I just read is. You couldn't. And so uh, uh, the old gay liberation related kinds of authors and writers have drifted away except for me. And I'm not even trying to be involved in the journals. I'm putting my interest more in, in immediate relations with the immediate persons around me. They're trying to get more and more technical with them, trying to get more and more theoretically dense with them. But in living embodied practice, first through the few individuals, as that went on through the years, and gradually enough formation to found an institute to it. And then from that began a whole new level of trying to write things that address these uh, gay uh, uh, affirmative or uh, centered concerns in a union language, and now the world that has now been completely invaded by postmodernism. Does that maybe answer your question somewhat as to why this happened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was not any pro-gay stuff after this, after the early 90s, basically. So that doesn't mean these journals just Ever. started discussing postmodernism more? Yeah, that's what happened. There was the end of homo stuff, basically. Yeah. Every odd thing now and then, you know, would be some odd homo thing here and there. Not even this pro-gay stuff from me or Hawk or anyone, not even at levels. Even more primitive than that, anything here and there. Just tiny little things. And then all of a sudden, the, the uh, postmodern stuff occurred. Like Barry Miller. Mm -hmm. Which is this whole other view of what they don't call homosexuals or they invalidate as homosexuals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so they filled the gaps, so to speak. Or they were much more acceptable to all these editors and, mm -hmm. and uh, publishers in the union uh, literature because it all accorded, this postmodernist thought accords with traditional homophobia. Meaning the depersonalization of homosexuals as persons. Barry Miller is a chief uh, example of writing that right now. He said, I call it the new homophobia. <laughs> it's again all concerned with dehumanizing uh, mm -hmm. gays. It's still going on. It's called postmodernism. In Jungian thought, it's a big cheese now. I reread your name. Yeah. Is My name's Philip. His article recently it was a two Barry Miller? Um, yeah, and uh, I think it's like um, analytical perspectives on homosexual expressions. Mm -hmm. So he gets away. I guess it's you yeah. know you can't have a homosexual identity. Right. Like Postmodern thought. Right. It's right. Kind of right. Naive. Right. That there's any homosexual identity. Yes. yes. And also sort of reactionary. It's it's um, yeah. colluding with um, <clears throat> unjust power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I read Barry Miller's article, and it, it's, he talks about, he tries to talk about how these, um, you have to analyze every single expression of homosexual behavior for its own individual right. sort of meaning, meaning, and there's no predetermined meaning. So I was trying to like figure out how it's, you know, different from your thought, mm -hmm. where there is somehow more of a definite Sort of I'm saying that Barry Miller is on purpose not noticing that earlier meaning. 
And so he plays a game where he says, now we're going to get rid of all the predetermined meanings that are caused from outside the psyche by society, saying the idea of being gay, or gay identity, or calling our desire homosexual. Okay, that's outer stuff now. Okay, so he says, once we do that, we don't have the impulse itself. Okay, I'm saying gay identity comes from the same thing. So in other words, I would argue that Barry Miller is playing a game, an intellectual game, and he's actually a bullshit artist doing violence. He's making it into a game that there's no such thing as an intrinsic urge to become gay by itself originally. Right. He's saying it does not exist, that if we go down to that level, and we feel below the level of gay identity, below the level of calling our desire or orientation homosexual, we just feel into the original impulse, or we go into being a child and feeling that original impulse. Okay, we're not going to come to some organic, original, primal thing, which is itself what we might call same sex, gushy, yummy, all by itself, and have that meaning and intelligence itself. And this, by the way, is a direct contradiction in Jung's own definition of the eros as the intelligence of your organic, original libido. And in fact, contradicts Barry's own, I would assume, Jungian grasp of what it means to be heterosexual. Even though he claims he treats them both equally, he does not. He goes after homos, and after homos, and after homos, and after homos, and never does the same with heteros, never. But he claims on the theory it's all fair. So rip-off artists, in my opinion, we get down to the key theoretical ways in particular. Uh, but I think it's best to appreciate them in terms of these particulars in terms of a more serious grasp of uh, Jungian comprehension for the sake of a more serious practice of Jung's effort of active imagination in a gay-centered way. That would be the reason to learn these details of how Barry is off with the theory. Or how he's contradicting, in my opinion, he's, contradict he's contradicting himself as handling of core Jungian theory around the libido. He claims we can go to this place where, origi where originally there is the desire that arises from childhood. And we don't find that these organizations that do it wrong. I dispute that. I said that when we develop what's called a more sexual orientation, there was the wish beforehand that's not so subcultural. So it's not caused by language or culture. Sexual orientation. Right? We call it. It can be influenced. Even things can be certainly influenced, of course. They're not caused. So this is a, for Gary to say, you see all this hormone stuff is not caused by the organic psyche. It claims to be a union and everything being a union is not it's caused by organic psyche. So you have to get rid of being homo level understanding to be really organically homo. You see, but he's not doing that for anyone else. He's just picking on gays for this. Uh, it's really suspicious business cause he's picking on gays, number one, but the way he's picking on gays is also fishy. Well, by itself, I'm saying because of the theory. He said that somehow we as gays are not authentic to our original impulse. And somehow become twisted calling itself homo, or organized in the way we think of it. Whereas I argue the opposite way, I argue all these terms come out of the original wish. The concept of the identity comes out of the urge. And the urge was there before language. The urge was there before history. And you're not a mere accident of time and place. Not at all. No sexes, no sexuality is. I think it's a cheap way of looking at things. I think Barry is a vicious hypocrite like many of the human beings are. Many people could say they're psychological. There's a more basic opinion, a criticism. To hold to being psychologically minded is not either or are. It's such a new way of being, it's such a more advanced way to be psychologically aware of oneself and others versus not aware, to be only unconsciously caught in the defenses of others. It's still such a new thing that we, no one can do it more than a little bit. You can people like Freud and Jung only do it really a little bit or something like that, or just a little bit. And it goes down from that. You know, we're talking about 100 years and it's something that has to revolutionize all of humanity over the next several thousand years, what like the Jan might have done. Consequences of all that. Uh, so, something like that we're talking about just in the first hundred years or something like that. Picture if we were, you know, 1900 years ago, and this was 100 AD in Alexandria or someplace. It's kind of like that. But now it's, what, now it's a more, much more ambitious stage of human challenge, which is to become psychological. And it must become psychological. It's not enough to, to, to be oblivious to that level anymore because of the unconscious dynamics of the highly developed ego defenses of people in all cultures. The evolution of the mind has pushed it, has evolved this highly evolved ego. And now the next step is it must become awake to itself as such. We call that psychology, psychological self-awareness in the way I'm using that idea. So that's got a little farther far field, but I think addressed uh, your question a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I have a, maybe a little problem. Actually, that was interesting how you said you were. Let's touch on a little bit. We can get more. <coughs> I mean, we'll, we'll actually get more into, I think, the substance when 
I said this, we'll train departments to get more into grasping the particulars of how that's so, how Barry Miller is, is, is hypocritically handling union theory. But, yeah. I mean, he probably thinks he's very stuck. Extremely. Extremely. Sophisticated. Extremely. It's fascinating how people can be so sophisticated psychologically and yet. Yes. Yes. Or the anal analogy here, a slightly different feel, would be the Dalai Lama. How can he be so spiritual at the end of it? so strong and sexual. Puzzle to me. So it's for the same reasons, kind of what I said, that uh, even when there is a serious grasp of this thing, it's just a little bit. So Barry Miller is, uh, unfortunately, I think, a, a, a stronger and dramatic example of that meditation. This is another reason why uh, we at the Institute for Contemporary Brain and Psychoanalysis want our institute to be a true homosexual organization, not a mere so-called gay version of what the readers already have done. And we're going to get the next two uh, uh, club meetings, uh, uh, general club meetings, we're going to get into presenting the, some of the substance of and thinking and development of what that means, what that amounts to. So I'm going to save that for there just to let you know. We're very concerned with this uh, level of, of grasping this and developing further. It's really hot and yummy stuff, you know. How does it bear as a hypocrite? How that's related to uh, reader ideology versus gay ideology, or ideology, no matter that Barry is really a gay man, is in denial of the goodness of that gay identity. That's all. He's a self-hating uh, um, 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 house singer, basically. It's disgusting, but true. And they all take him as like the household home. And these journals. He's very prominent. Because there aren't anyone else. I'm telling you, because they're all cow. Homos are cow to the individual, even the most young dudes. There was a gay union who came here for a while, and then he for a moment. Gay union who came here for a while, and he stopped coming because it's a boring you know? What was his name? That's gay union. Oh, John Porterfield. Yeah, that's it, John Porterfield. Yeah. yeah. It's not no guy, you know, but it's, it's eyes by the way. I can see why they're asking over here. You know, this is very esoteric stuff. I did not raise over my eyes. So I saw, I, I saw Han waiting here. <laughs> my name's Callum. And uh, uh, as I try to engage with you, I'm noticing I'm really nervous. And uh, uh, I, I think it has a lot to do with feeling uh, somehow that I'm like being exposed or vulnerable or something and that uh, there's some sort of test involved and I'm always feeling inferior on the inside about it so I just wanted to kind of out that because I, I, I say that too because uh, when I first read your paper, this paper, um, years ago I was uh -huh. wanting to ask you all kinds of questions uh -huh. and now as I get the chance I'm feeling <laughs> incredibly scared and intimidated. Okay. Um, so that I, I really there were there are really two aspects that I wanted. One I wanted to comment on, and one I have a question about. Uh -huh. The one I want to comment on is really related to this idea that, that Philip was just talking about, uh -huh. and I think you're alluding to him, the fact that the paper needed to be written in the first place, which is that there does seem to be this, um, at least in my experience, this like denial of a kind of violence, or maybe violence in general towards homosexuality, towards gayness, mm -hmm. Um, and I, as I've been trying to uh, engross and, and, and ground myself more and more in my own gay spiritedness and try to talk to other people about where I perceive violence in our interactions and in our dynamics, there's like this close out. There's like this huge denial that I'm like I not, can't see it, can't at all. Yeah, and it's infuriating. And I, I got infuriated in your paper when you were talking about how little words like top, you know, that they're, uh -huh, there's, right. it's like a way of, of trying to cut off the homosexual dick, you know, and, uh -huh. and it just really angers me.